What up martial arts people and welcome to this channel. If this is the first time here on the channel, my name is Chris. I'm a student of sports science here at the University of Bern in the most beautiful country here in Switzerland and I'm also an athletic coach at the National Performance Center for Kickboxing and today we're watching Inside West Side Barbell, powerlifting's most exclusive and controversial gym. We also have um, a solid documentary reaction video to this very gym here on the channel. I think almost two hours long if you want to see this, if you want to chill a little bit. But today it's about Inside West Side Barbell. It's a video from Weiss Sports and I'm gonna be sure as I'm pumped up to see what Weiss has to say about West Side Barbell. Let's go! Cambered bar, love it. <laughs> yes, Simmons. Let's go. The ATP performance matters. training. <laughs> the gym matters the most. And if anything got in the way of that gym, it's just gone. That's, Here's that's the last nice. samurai weightlifting. So maybe for those who are not familiar with what is Westside Barbell, Westside Barbell basically was famous or is famous now still, but. Uh, sadly, because of the passing away of Louis Simmons, uh, not so much anymore. But it is famous for like producing the strongest motherfuckers on the whole planet. But it has like this approach to lifting weights that is a little bit um, well. You can debate about it because it's like either you're strong enough to go through the training or you're not, and then you either get injured and you fall off or you make it. That's basically the deal there at West Barba. So let's go. A tiny dingy warehouse dead in the middle of Ohio is home to world champions and record holders. West Side Barba has become... Okay, let's see. Women's meat records, men's meat records. Yeah, a powerlifting like event, it's called a meet then. So you meet the guys and the women uh, to train for this war and to also then compete. That's called a meet. Legendary for its brutal form of strength training. I think the that's gym totally founder Louis Simmons is the godfather of American powerlifting, and people from yeah. all over the world come here to study his methods. Godfather of the conjugate How did method. How get started in powerlifting? I just want to be strong. And oh, I he interviewed you. Oh, okay, nice. Well, you know, I, low self-esteem probably. I didn't have much, and uh, growing up, and so I got in a lot of a lot of fights. But weights turned me around. It gave me self-confidence. Why <laughs> is sort of gym mine. now in Columbus and not out west or, or any, anywhere else? Because I live here. And you know, we're just That's the practical. <laughs> yeah, because I live here, I don't know. Why should I travel? What the fuck? <laughs> People go to Shaolin Temple. Shaolin Temple don't go to them. There is no more respected True. or controversial voice in strength. I, I, I wanted to say, like, it's the Chinese approach. Either you are strong enough to lift the weights or you fall out. Same with, like, the black like, training at Shaolin Temple. Louis Simmons. Where we have countless As a reactions on the channel, by the way. 50 years, he's ranked elite in five different weight classes and was a top 10 lifter for nice over slow bar years. squat there. In 1987, he started Westside Barbell, and lifters began seeking Louis out for his advice. He quickly gained notoriety for his unconventional training methods and machines, along with his embrace of steroids and other performance enhancing drugs, which is something he did not want to discuss with us, but has addressed unapologetically in the past in an interview with Joe Rogan. I went on antibiotics January 1970. 1970. Wow, look at this, Joe Rogan. Episode 854. Wow, okay, I, I don't know if this was because this was the office of Joe Rogan or it was because Louis was there and Joe Rogan went to him, but I think it was the other way around. And uh, so what is this, 2016? Yeah. I've never been off. See, it's not against the rules to take drugs. It's against the rules to get caught taking drugs. Louis has stated in interviews and on uh, the website, website yes. that he does consulting for a number of NFL and college football teams. However, powerlifting is the gym's primary focus, and lifters deemed worthy by Louis are taken under his wing to train for free. I've been here for seven years, and I think I've probably been around Lou more than everyone else. And I mean, the man, he lives in his own world, and he just rejects everything outside of it. Like, what, what would matter? Like, what's your name? He doesn't care. If you lift numbers, he cares about that. That's more important. So what's the difference between this gym and then other gyms across America? There's a lot of difference in this gym. This is a club. My accountant told me I spend $1,500 a month for buying breakfast. First thing in the morning at 6 o'clock, we all eat breakfast together four times a week, and we discuss training. Then we come here and train. That's a big difference. You know, uh, too many gyms, you go to a gym and you leave, you never see the guy again. These guys are uh, pretty much buddies, and everyone... 
that's also, I think, the hu what makes the huge success because from a marketing standpoint, if you want to bind people, you have to get them closer. That's something that I experienced also in um, my former Kung Fu school because it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that you need to know about marketing tactics. And this is really something, I don't know if he does it consciously or subconsciously, but it's really a great tool if you want to bind customers. And in his, his example, I think it's not on purpose because the people that are going to eat breakfast with him are in this like inner circle in this inner club they're not paying for training there as he said because he wants to create that environment of the strongest men and women around but it's really that's there it's something that i would love because then you have like it's it builds an identity you know that's cool really cool like sturdy old ass greasy that's nice just sort of lifting from just a lifter into actually helping other people look better i didn't I always wanted to be a lifter, you know. But then when guys started coming, so of course I had to guide them along and that's how we came up. How do people become members here? Um, they come in for a tryout. And they gotta have the body, like, you know, be honest, we'd never let you in here, just as you yeah. fight, right? Yeah. But you know, you, you gotta have a body like that and then you have to be able to do the mental training. Every day you gotta do this freaking thing over and over and it gets harder and harder. So, but you got enough nuts to go until you got nothing left, it's all mental. Imagine this Who's brutal mental training. Variety of backgrounds. I There's swear, I want this. I want this camera bar at our gym. College academics. The common thread among many of them, though, is a troubled past, whether it be prison stints or drug addiction. How do you find powerlifting? Why did you get into it? Uh, keep myself out of trouble. I was fucked up and all that shit. And well, what do you mean fucked up? Like, so I was a, addicted to opiates. I'm seven years clean in September. But I've lived away since I was a kid. Congrats, buddy. And I went to the penitentiary, and I started powerlifting in prison. What did you go to jail for? Oh, everything, man. Possession with intent, attempted murder, aggravated robbery, first degree assault. Yeah. Whole bunch of stuff when I was young. That was a long time ago. So was, was powerlifting a factor in you just, like, redirecting that energy into something more positive? It, yeah, I figured I was in there, you know. I might as well lift weights and get big. I wanted to come where the strongest guys train. I swear. And yeah, that's the best him. thing. I mean, the window's closing for me. I'm 42. But I wanted to spend this the last years here to bring out the best. I used to drive from Indianapolis to here, which is three hours, two and a half, three hours, to train. And did that for four years. And we finally said, fuck it, and we moved up here. You got the best fucking teacher and mad scientist in there. That old motherfucker knows all sorts of shit. <laughs> Louis has spent decades idolizing. I swear, that's, it's all about the environment. It's all about the environment. You cannot do this at a commercial gym, for sure. There's just a fucking radio music, but that's why I love my gym. Because when there's no people, and because I work there, I could go at the off hours, and I, and I blast music so freakishly loud. I don't need headphones, brother. I don't need headphones. <laughs> because this is exactly what gets you in zone. You also don't need an energy drink, then. That gets you in zone. The music, the people around, like-minded people, that's, that's what makes progress. And there's, I mean, there's a saying that, show me your five best friends and I tell you who you are. If you surround yourself with such people, like-minded people, no matter you are going to get huge success in whatever you're doing, whatever. Combing through translations of their secretive training manuals. He bases West Side's training largely on Russian and Bulgarian systems, which he feels produces not only strength, but true grit. Louis. You should see um, the. I think it's not. It's not the Russians. Uh, some sort of this um, kind of countries. The wrestling training. I think the Soviets. Yeah, well, Russian Soviets. Look at this training style because <laughs> all that newer, which I would include myself. Also, newer trainers. They never tell the people there. Hey, you shouldn't round your back while deadlifting. Then they're doing like I don't know circuit deadlifts. 50 to 100 kilos rounding their back like you have now you have never seen around the circle <laughs> around your spine <laughs> so crazy and they were the strongest motherfuckers on the planet man back in the days and that's that really keeps you thinking i mean it has worked but it is also about how can you bring this kind of training to the modern people or the general public i would never tell a, a guy that comes in two times to train with me uh the strength training course to tell hey you cannot round your back it's i mean it's also a challenge to just say hey activate your lats while you're doing the deadlift and not just shrug shoulders right that's already different so that that's then 
thing that the coach needs to do to get it across the right way. And here, the people already have crazy experience, right? So he can do this for sure. Feel that? It's great for lateral movement. Oh, it's tremendous. Like I feel it really strengthening my feet. Mm -hmm. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming forward this way. I'm trying. I can't. Louis' cult of personality transformed Westside from a local gym into a brand name. But that hasn't stopped Westside from being accused of cheating. Their brash confidence. We have enough drugs to him by the scale of some amazing things. Jared's have given them another world record they don't talk about, where it's smallest balls. <laughs> Dude's been on the box for 40 something years, denies the rage rage. It's a real thing, but wants to pu punch old places for no reason, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous. Hate on <laughs> Though not all the guys in the gym are juicing, the ones we spoke to were unapologetic about their use. What do you think about that, like the controversies with drugs and all that stuff? Do you have any opinions on that? Yeah, fucking come see us. If it's a drug thing, cool, man. I'll tell you what I fucking take. And you can take it. You can see if you can do what we can do. People think we get judged easier because we're from West Side. We get judged harder because people already have that perception. Powerlifting competitions are broken into two categories, drug tested and non-drug tested. It's the same lifts and judging. The only difference is one organization makes you pee in a cup and the others do not. The split in competitions happened in 1980. I have a pretty strong opinion on the drug thing because in my opinion everybody's is juiced up as fucking hell. I mean have a look at football players. I mean football is probably the sport where's the most money in. And what do you think when a football player has an accident and he cannot play? They choose this boy up that he can play, that he can heal in the shortest amount of time that he can play because it's about the money, it's about the bus, right? So we don't need to think that in like clean sports, football basketball, whatever, in the NBA, that the people are not Jews. They just don't get caught, right? It's, it's the same thing. And I, in my opinion, because everybody's Jews, just can't, you can't legalize it. I mean, what the fuck? For sure, it's good that you have, like, um, a meet where you are tested and a meet where you are not tested, but we shouldn't get ourselves delusioned because of what I said. I mean, almost anybody is doing it. Well, that's also the controversy in the uh, Olympic style weightlifting that we had. With the formation of the American Drug Free Powerlifting Federation, breaking away from the United States Powerlifting Federation, which had become overrun with drug use. Over time, more federations formed, and today there are currently nine. Some of them I know, yeah. Leagues. Seven test, 12 do not. Shit, as far as the substances go, if you want to take drugs, take drugs. Yeah. If you don't want to take drugs, don't take drugs. I respect all forms, raw, drug-free, use drugs, do whatever the fuck you want, snort cocaine on the platform, I don't give a fuck, but I don't keep beating drug-free federations. This gym has broke close to 140 all-time world records. These are top five totals uh, for Coker in uh, 181, uh, 98, and 220. That board is my life right there. That's all my friends, all my memories, and all the accomplishments that I've ever done and people in here, and uh, that's all I care about. A lot of times you're lifting for the old man. Lifting for him is a driving force. He'll never admit it, but he wants us to succeed. And the old man's getting old, you know? There's certain things that I want to accomplish while he's still here. No, he's not here anymore. Oh, what the fuck, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven that makes 14. Shit. What does it take to break a world record? You gotta be willing to endure pain because you're gonna have setbacks, you're gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna tweak muscles. You know, I've broke my back three times, I fucking blown my fucking biceps off, ruptured this, fucked my neck up, I can't feel shit in this hand half the time, and I still do what I do and I'm still going. For all the training and abuse to their bodies, the reality is powerlifting isn't a financially lucrative sport. After you factor in all the costs, no, you need to be ludicrous to do this. There's no monetary value to this shit. Like, we're basically kicking the shit out of ourselves just because we love it. When I got the invite to come out here. And that's, that's why I find it so interesting because, I mean, f I have to compare it to football because it's the closest thing and football players are earning like a shitload of money. And I'm sure none of them would do it if they would get as much money as those guys would do. That's because of true love for the sport loving what they're doing and that has my fullest respect well, don't really get and it, yes you know? they should so get like, paid what more pay you what it's like we don't fucking get paid 
maybe I'm fucked up, but the more beat up and hurt I am, the more I enjoy what I do. I crawl to the bathtub in the morning because I can't stand up straight. That's when you find out what you're really made of. After spending time with Louie and the guys at Westside, it became clear that this gym is absolutely everything to them. Above it all, the controversy, the hard exteriors, and the hard lives, the gym is a place for them to feel like they belong to something. Yeah. If you it's about weights, identity. If I wasn't lifting weights, yeah, if you weren't here, you I'd be fucking do. dead or in trouble somewhere. I can't imagine walking away from it. I'll be here till I'm either in a wheelchair or dead. A lot of people think that I'm a little off, but it doesn't matter because my mind's on one thing. And if a man's mind's on one thing, I'm like a samurai, can never straighten the way. When I go, I'll be in that room, the, the dead men room, you know, hanging on that wall. The west side till I die. That's the spirit, that's the fucking spirit, man. Crazy good video, crazy good video. If you haven't seen, we also have membership now, and it's not a basic like membership that you pay me and you don't get anything in return. You get good amount of good knowledge in return. We have P uh, PDF ebooks that you can get or that you will get for free. One is about core training and I mean actual core training, not like this shitty circuits that you see on the internet, like this 25 minute app burner hit workout. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, it's like actually something scientifically based that is gonna get you a strong core. We have a, a recipe collection with over 50 high protein recipes and then we also have the complete guide to your basic strength training. And I say this a lot of times, I don't want to sell you like a huge product, a huge um, trainings plan for a couple hundreds of bucks because that doesn't make any sense because when we talk about online programs it needs to be either the complete basics and the complete basics are more or less clear and then it can't be expensive because everything is almost for free out there and then if you get into that intermediate stage you need a person training you need a coach there's no way around this i mean i have a coach everybody has a coach that wants to get it to a more serious level I mean, Muhammad Ali had a coach and he was the best of the fucking best, right? You need a coach then. So this is one thing for me. Go watch another video and we see us in that one. Peace.